Nettie here from Nettie Gaming and uh, I'm going to share with you another video today and this one in particular is about the Amiga and the Wii. Uh, well, you can do this on the Wii U using the virtual Wii or you can use it just on a plain old Wii. Now for this video you will need to have Homebrew installed, you will need to have Homebrew Launcher um, or custom firmware on your Wii to be able to do this. Now there are, I ain't going to show you how to do it because there are loads of videos all over YouTube about this. The reason I'm making this particular video is because there aren't many videos about this. I've looked um, sort of all over the place to see if the, you know, anybody could talk in detail about the Wii and uh, Amiga emulation on the Wii but nobody really seems to be doing a video about it in detail people just seem to be doing a video of the finished product promising that they do a how-to video and not actually doing it so um, what I've done if you look at my previous Amiga video that video shows you how you can install Classic Workbench on a real Amiga with a load of games using WHD load this a similar process um, has sort of been created now so what I've done is I've taken that hard disk file that I created copied it onto one that I've made from scratch um, that's two gigabyte and then uh, two gigabyte and then um, basically put that onto our SD card to put into the Wii now you are going to need to have some homebrew knowledge of the Wii and the Wii U to be able to do this but if you do have any questions or comments please just put it in the comments below and I'll uh, do my best to answer whatever I can for you. So um, what I'm going to do is actually show you the uh, two gigabyte one um, and all you need to do is download it from the description um, download that and then transfer it over to the root of your SD card. I'm going to show you that a video of that first off and then I'll show you how to use it. Um, and then at the very end of the video, I'm doing it the other way around, I'll actually show you how I made that hard disk file so that you can make one of your own size basically. Um, because I thought it was important for you to understand the process because you might want to add more stuff to the uh, hard disk file you might not just want to have the one that I've created out of the box you might want to chop and change stuff in which case watching the very end of the video would be more for you but as I say I've, I've kind of put this together just so that you've got something that you can transfer over to the root of your SD card put into your homebrew Wii uh, and just get playing really so um, I hope you like this video um, enjoy Okay then, so as you can see here, um, the, uh, you've got the two versions, you've got the four gigabyte version and then you've got the uh, two, they are both the same, you've got apps folder, uh, wad folder and UAE folder, so all you need to do is quite simply copy them to the root of your SD card, so that's all we're going to do here, it is, I've made this as straightforward as I can guys to be honest, so that folks can just play and go. Um, really because there's quite a bit we need to unpack uh, on the Wii itself and talk about um, and then of course I'm going to show you at the very end how I actually made the hard disk file so that you can make a version of your own and add it in if you want to as well so I'm just going to skip this part now where um, I'm copying it over because it can take a little while Okay, now that's done, I'm going to safely eject it and we'll head over to the Wii. Right, sorry about that, I had to reboot. Realised what an idiot, I hadn't actually put my uh, card in, so that wouldn't have been very good, would it? So, um, again, you do need to be running custom firmware on this. But... Um, my honest answer is I don't know if you have to have custom firmware on both the Wii and the virtual Wii. You could just have it on the virtual Wii. But for those of you that have just got a Wii only and you're not using a Wii U, um, once I jump into the virtual Wii, you can just follow the process as normal. So apologies, I'll go back in again. Faffing about. Okay. 
it. So, go back into my homebrew channel. I thought I was going mad for a second. Okay. Right now, you can see that we've got the Wii, the Wii UAE, which you can run from here, um, but we want a forwarder so we don't have to keep coming out of the homebrew channel and it's just more clicks isn't it so um if you go into yet another wad manager and just wait for that to load up press a to continue press a to continue Okay, and the WAD location we want is on the SD card. So, yep, yeah, press A. And then we want to find it. So, we'd still installed it in WAD. No, I didn't. I'd installed it in WADs. <laughs> uh, or am I going mad? It might have been in WAD. I've got a few in here. So, yours probably won't look like mine. There it is, UAE. Okay. So, it'll either be in WADs or WAD. Um, but that's the one that you want. So it's, uh, if I just make that a bit clearer, sorry, it's the reflection. So it's the UAE, DUAA version uh, one, one four, and then second edition WAD. That's the one that we want. So you hit A and then you um, press the A button to continue to install the WAD. It'll install that for us. Okay, that's completed and it really is as simple as that. So, um, I think we can exit out of here now. So if we hit the home button and hit the home button again, it will bring us back to the home brew channel. And then uh, if we hit the home button again, we can exit to the system menu. And now what should be happening is when you load up the Wii, you should have a lovely uh, channel at the very front now like I've got so if I just go back you should have this now just like I have okay so we'll go into it very cool okay now this is where it changes up slightly so uh, just while we're waiting for that to load up I'm going to zoom out so that you can see <coughs> what I'm doing so if I just move this across Okay. I'll try and do it in a way that you can see. Now, at the moment, this is this is the proper old scroll screen that we used to get when nothing was installed on an Amiga. Um, we need to tell it where our system file is that we created. So what we do is we press the home button. OK, and this brings you into your main menu. Now, Bobby um, on YouTube has done a great video on how you can play floppy disks on this um, system. And uh, I'll put a little link um, to his page into that video now for you. Um, but specifically, we want to make sure that we've got our hardware set up like we want it and we want to do the hard disk emulation. So we use the... Oh, Left and right is up and down in this case because we're turning the remote on its side. But if you go down to hardware options, two is select, one is back. So hardware options, I'm on A1200, I'm on PAL. If I just go into chipset, yeah, everything looks like it's been saved to the configuration that I saved for you. So you don't, you shouldn't have to do anything in terms of faffing about. So if I just press the home again and I go down to HD emulation, press 2 then what we want to do is mount um, a hard disk okay so if I click that and then click RW and then I want to select the one that we created which was the Wii hard disk file 2 gigabyte so if I go zoom in so you can see that I'll go back just to show you again so go down to HD emulation Oops. We want to mount a RDB hard disk, yes, and then we want to select that one. Okay, so now we've told it where the uh, emulator is, where, where we want to point it. So if we save our config, save it to the top one. Okay, that's now been saved. So what we want to do now is reset our UAE. Okay. 
it is a little bit strange to navigate at first when you are first doing it. Um, it did take me a while to get used to this business of turning it around, but it does become second nature after a while. Now, the other thing with this is it can take a little while to load up. Um, I mean, if somebody knows in the comments how to sort of speed up the emulation speed for this to load up the workbench a little bit quicker, please do, you know, let us know in the comments. It helps everybody out. But um, I suppose you just have to be patient with it. There are there is quite a lot of games, quite a lot of information and stuff here for us to, you know, be getting on with. So I'm not surprised really that it does take a bit of time. Now I'd imagine if you do go for my four gig um, hard file, then that may take a little bit longer. Um, but as you can see, it's loaded up now. It's probably been about a minute um, to get that loaded up. And there we go. That's what we were looking at on our computer when we were setting up the uh, image itself. Okay, now, um, the Wii remote actually works like a mouse. So, um, as you can see there, I don't know whether you can see, but I'm pointing and the mouse is moving. Um, so, it works quite well on this little monitor. Um, I haven't tried it out properly fully on the TV yet, but I imagine it's probably easier. Um, but what I'm going to do is just give you a little bit of a tour and a walkthrough in terms of using the games, how you use the... Um, the keypad and everything else um, and how you use the keyboard and how you put the keyboard away and all the rest of it okay so if we click on our start and I'll just drag this up here now this um, all of the stuff in the bottom right hand corner like the hard disk and all of that you can get rid of that and I'll show you that in a little bit but some folks might want it up some folks might not want to see it at all but I'll show you how to do that as well so if I just go into uh, WHD load go into my eye game and again I'm just hitting the A button here as a, a mouse selection so you're, uh, you've are you got left click and then right click on the back so it works like a mouse and it is quite it's quite good actually and I, I must admit navigating this um, emulator opposed to learning the Windows one was a lot easier there was a lot less in it so as you can see, we've got all our games here. So I'm going to see if I can load one up for you to show you it working. And I'll go with Rough and Tumble again because that's one I tend to use quite a bit. Uh, where was it? A bit more. There we go, Rough and Tumble. So it's loading up for us. Okay, and it's saying print screen to quit. So that's our, the print screen button. Um, sometimes it's a mix of three on this. So I'll, I'll show you the ones that I tend to use. So as you can see, we've got games loading. How cool is this? <laughs> Honestly, I've been wanting to do this for ages. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, now... Number two is your fire button. You can assign these buttons, um, and I will come on to that in a moment on how you do that. But uh, let's just play a little bit of it first to show you it working, so you know it's not voodoo, and I'm not just being some Facebook bullshit, um, YouTube bullshitter. So, because honestly, nothing annoys me more than these gits who put videos on saying, "Oh, look, I've got this and that on my Amiga," and. Uh, Amiga on the Wii or whatever and they they don't tell you how they did it nothing more annoying so there you go you can see it's working and I must admit the Wii remote is actually pretty good I mean don't get me wrong you know it's not it, it's not a joystick but it's uh, it's still pretty good so I'm, I'm shit at this game <laughs> but there we go so it works now how do we come out of it so a couple of things um, if you press your plus button, this brings up your keyboard. So I'll zoom in again to show you. Your plus button brings up your keyboard. And again, it's just a case of pointing and clicking to the key that you want. Now, it was um, print screen, wasn't it? So I think in this case, it's going to be star to get out. And that brings us back to our menu. Um, now, if we want to... Uh, 
what was I going to show you? I was going to, yes, I was going to show you how to assign keys, wasn't I? So if you want to come out of this um, and you want to exit out and go back to, into your Wii menu, if you press the home button on your Wii remote, this brings you back to your um, main menu within the emulator itself. Okay, um, you can customize the Wiimote configuration, though I don't recommend you do it um, because I've already assigned um, the buttons for you. So you've got fire, um, you've got your second sort of joystick button, then you've got this um, or the uh, space bar, and then you've got your F1 because some games require you to press F1 or the space bar to get into, which is why I assigned them there. And then you've got your fire button here, um, and then of course the top one is to uh, select your keypad. Now you can assign these uh, to whichever you want, but I think that for the for the easiest navigation this is the best way but this is where you configure them um so you can have two wii remotes for player one player two although i must admit player twos does seem to be a bit sketchy because when i tried out bubble excuse me when i tried out bubble bubble um for some reason the wii mote two kept running off in a direction so i haven't figured out what's going on with that yet whether it's my settings or what so so that's that but as i say if you want to come out of this all together you just quit 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 click quit can't speak today and that will bring you back out into your Wii menu so it's nice and straightforward um you know so that you don't have to faff about now as i say okay now what should be happening now is when the next time you go into your um amiga it shouldn't load up the menu first thing or that purple screen with the floppy disk that we saw at the beginning this now should um, mean that it should load you straight into the workbench. So what I'm going to do is just do a little test to see how long it actually takes to load in. Okay. And I love those old ticking sounds that they've added to it. It really does sound like an old Amiga reading the disc. So that's been 30 seconds so far. Okay, it's been a minute. Oh, hard thinking about it. There we go. So that's a minute 20 seconds. So, as I say, it does take a while to load up, but you know, in the time that that takes to load up, really. Um, you know, chances are it's going to take less time to do this once than it will to load in each individual floppy. And some games, as you know, have four discs. Um, so, yeah. Now, I did say, and I've realised I didn't show you, is um, I was going to show you how to get rid of the um, these icons across the bottom. So, if you press your home button, and then you go down to... just trying to remember where it is other options you've got an option there that says leds on or off you can turn them off um, and that will make them disappear now i don't personally like them off i like to see them because i like to see if this is actually moving or not um so yeah that's it really on how you do that okay so um i hope you enjoy playing them um, I'm going to show you the video now of how I actually created this hard disk file just in case you want to do my, uh, a similar version or you want to change it up a bit. Um, I'll also leave a link to my Amiga setup folder which I use to create the hard disk file. Um, again it's on the old YouTube video as well that I did when I created the original Amiga one.
Okay, speak to you later.